Our father and our grandfather worked very hard to put it all together. It is a place that has been precious to us. The years that we spent growing up here and what it's meant to our family. And we finally realized that we wanted to keep the land together and not divide it up. And we wanted to be able to keep it in the Babcock family. We just wanted to preserve the land. We love the farm. He didn't want to see it get out of the family if possible. He wanted to see that it stays as it is. One of the beauties of our community is the vistas that we have as we look out over these wonderful fields and we think about keeping that. Farmers aren't in this for the money. They would be doing something else. They do it for the love of the land. The money isn't that important. It really isn't. It was it's to save the farm, save the land. And you'll get an right. inside that will overwhelm you. Our ancestors, namely the Babcocks and the Meaches, came from western Massachusetts in 1831-1832 and settled in Rochester Township. Initial farmland was 151 acres, and through the generations, it's now over a thousand acres. Hugh Mosier, my great grandfather, his father homesteaded this farm. And of course, at his death, Hugh took it over. Hugh was the fifer in the spirit of 76. So it was passed down then to my grandpa Mosier, Walter, when my grandfather died, why my folks had taken the farm over. After my dad died, we wanted to take the farm over, and we've lived here ever since. So I'm the fifth generation here. So this is really home. Well, it's been in the family since 1835. Our great-great-grandfather came from England. He built a dam and built a grist mill and a cheese factory, had a little grocery store here. It was originally a larger place and then they sold off some and we have a hundred acres here now and rented out to farmers. I guess I've had the good fortune that in the last three years of my life. I had a good fortune decided that the economic model for a, a farm that was going to you know, succeed in this day and age had to be of a certain land mass, and so we started to acquire ground. I guess in total it consists of about 4,000 acres, not all of which is tillable, comprised of woods and permanent pasture. The farm has a rich history. The land was actually set aside for the founder of Parkman, Henry Parkman, in the early 1800s, hence the name Reservation Farm. My grandfather bought it in 1948 and converted it to a dairy farm, and uh, thankfully the farm has been in the family ever since. The number of farmers are getting older and retired, and the average age of, of the American farmer is always going up. It hasn't really gone down. A lot of the younger generation aren't as interested in farming, at least initially, in terms of how they're going to transfer the family farm to the next generation. And if they can't do that, who are they going to transfer it to to make sure it stays in production? It was perhaps arrogance on our part. We knew better than our children what could be done. And so we went ahead through the Western Reserve Land Conservancy. We have usually saved this place as. We're very fortunate in that Jar's son, Steve Babcock, is, is the farmer. He runs the land. He farms it right now. He does a great job, and we're proud of the kind of farming that he does. So we know at least for the next few decades it's taken care of. And I know Steve is hoping that his son will have some interest in it. We kind of just go one 
generation at a time on this. We thought of our ancestors, for them to clear all this woods and, and work to make it a profitable farm, we couldn't see it being sold to a developer and planted to houses. When my granddaughter said she might sell the place someday and get the money, I thought, well, it's up to us to do something about it. to ourselves and our, our uh, future generations, but even the people in the community. A conservation easement is, uh, in a sense, kind of a two-way contract between landowners and the land conservancy that gets recorded on the property like a deed does, permanently preserves certain aspects of the land. Each easement's a little bit different from the next. Some easements are more generated towards natural areas, pieces of woods, places that aren't farmland, and then other easements are geared towards agriculture and agricultural uses. And each easement is customized for every landowner that we work with. We sit down at the kitchen table with them, talk about the history of the property, what the future's like, provide options for them. There's things that maybe they haven't thought about that they might want to do, things they need to consider. And then we just go through a drafting process until it, we reach a document that everybody's happy with and it gets recorded. But it's a very customized process, a very personal process for the landowners. Will someone try to tell me what to do? Will someone dictate what I plant or how I plant it? And the, and the answer is no. In fact, he is encouraged to be the very same farmer he always was, to be the very best farmer he can be. There is no interference or obstacle because of our doing this. You're not going to make a huge profit. If you sell it, it's going to remain in agriculture. That's what we want. We think our father and our great-great-grandfather would be happy to see that done. I don't believe the restrictions placed on the easement cause us to do anything different than how we consider ourselves good stewards, good farmers. Every farmer who owns any land at all, large or small, is confronted with the reality of, of getting it transferred to the next generation. Certainly, at the very least, agricultural easements should be looked at from an estate planning perspective if a large family farm is involved. Our estate planning strategy that we would grant these conservation easements, therefore reducing the book value per acre of the ground in an effort to then transfer that ground to the next generation uh, at, the, at the greatest tax advantage. My mom and I have worked with several land trusts in the past 10 years trying to craft an agreement, an easement that's going to work, and it's been a struggle. We reached out through our attorney to Western Reserve Land Conservancy, and thankfully they had the expertise, and probably more importantly, the understanding that a conservation easement is a different animal than an ag easement. They knew how to draft that easement language to allow a farm to remain profitable because at the end of the day with the beautiful scenery it's great but you still have to pay the bills. Many reserve rights remain. Uh, for example, we have oil and gas wells on the property that remains. We can harvest timber in the woods. Uh, anything that deals with agriculture and it's a quite broad definition is permitted. If you have a place in your heart to try to preserve a piece of land that you've grown to love, then this is a thing to do. I'm not gonna say that you should do it, but if you do it, our experience has been we have never regretted it for a minute. Well, my advice initially would be to do it <laughs> because once this decision was made, we are more pleased with it every day, I think. So we found that this was what was really in our heart of hearts. My second advice would be to know that it's important to talk with others that have gone through this process or are in the midst of this process because there are similar questions that all people have as they 
approach this decision. I would also advise that there be a relationship formed with the Western Reserve Land Conservancy because there are people there who know the answers to the questions or know the resources to direct a person to. Uh, and in our case, very helpful in putting together the documents that must be used for, from step A to step B. Don't think twice. We just do it. <laughs> Dr. Andy. I really think it's a good thing. I wish they'd have had it years ago. I think they, you know, they would have been a lot more farms maybe, and it wouldn't have been sold like over here, it wouldn't have been sold to houses. We recommend it to anyone that has a, a lot of land or even a bog or anything like that. Farmland, especially. I felt very good about it. For me, is that we have stepped out in front of this thing. Now, I think that the idea that our neighbors, if you will, in the surrounding community are also seeing the benefit of this, not only personally, but for the land. It's a powerful legacy that we can leave to our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, and those that will never meet without knowing that we're setting the legacy in motion. It's a gift. It truly is a gift to those who will never know. This was my dream of my senior years. I said, now I can rest in peace.